Uh, but before we jump in on that, I just want to take a second and um, introduce myself and then let you take a moment to introduce yourself to me. But again, my name is Peter Zube and I work with Code of the Future. Uh, I used to be a teacher myself. I have a master's in education, actually elementary education. Uh, but then I was teaching AP computer science uh, when I was looking for a job. I found a computer science job in high school, so I went and taught that for a while. Uh, and now I've been working with Code of the Future. This will be my second full year with them. So, um, Last year I worked with Spalding and River Trail for about half the year. Um, I spent most of my time actually up in uh, Wisconsin, in Kettle Moraine, working with all their different schools up there. You experienced uh, the Scratch, which we're going to look at today, and Lego as well. Yes. Um, so we have sort of two cycles uh, of computer science we'll go through. One being on the <laughs> iPad, uh, and then the other is building with Legos, uh, and the older students get into building with robotics. Um, and the younger students learn computer science concepts using Legos. So uh, that will be another PE uh, down the road uh, for Lego. But awesome. The people who are in fourth, fifth grade, have you downloaded Tinker? Awesome. Okay, even this. Um, we do not have a friendly little guide for Tinker like this, but uh, maybe later as we get into it, I'll work a little closer with you to help you navigate it. Um, but it's, as you can see here, it might be just take a moment, kind of uh, read over the guide. Um, you might want to pull out your iPad and open up Scratch Junior. If you have Tinker, you might want to kind of just take a look at it um, and just explore it for a few minutes here. Uh, just to get a feel for the user interface, we would call it. Um, like how do you start a new project or how do you find uh, the different little characters or sprites, we would call them. Um, things like that. But take, take just a few minutes, look at your guide if you have Scratch. Um, and just kind of familiarize yourself with the uh, user interface. And then we'll get it more into it together in a little bit here. Uh, but our big idea is we want to make a project just to answer this question. Like, so what are you curious about when it comes to computer science? Like, what do you want to learn about it? Uh, what, what questions maybe do you have? Uh, and the idea is that you have um, one, two, three, four different uh, sprites or, or actors, if you're using Tinker, um, that you could either click on, and then maybe a speech bubble would come up, and it would say, I want to know more about uh, how to make websites, or I want to know more about how to make video games, or I want to know more about how to incorporate uh, writing or a map. Um, so you're, you'll go and you can add whatever background you might want to add, um, and then you can draw your own sprites uh, using Scratch or Tinker. Um, and then if you want to follow these step by step in here, this will guide you to make a project where this sprite here can move and bump into these other sprites. And as it bumps into those sprites, it sends a message. So it, it bumps into this one, and then a message is sent. It's almost like a text message. It's kind of like, hey, I bumped into you. Now you're going to respond to my text message. So that's what these steps here are uh, walking you through to do. Um, for right now, really about 10 minutes, so you might want to just try to create your own background, try to create your own sprites, uh, and then if you get to the point where you're ready to program a little bit, um, then I can kind of facilitate with that. Uh, but I want you kind of exploring your tool that you have and uh, starting to try to program it, and you might want to use this as a guide uh, to do that. So kind of answering that question, what do you want to learn more about, what are you curious about, and uh, just really try to get familiar with the tool. How many people are able to add a background or, or create a background? Not, okay, so that might be something we'll look at then uh, as we get into the next project later. Um, after lunch, I'll get my iPad projected so I can walk you a little more step by step through uh, and help clarify things up here on the big screen. Um, a little bit. Um, anyone want to share something that they're curious about or want to learn about when it comes to computer science? Anyone have any ideas <laughs> to first you with right now? No? Everything, <laughs> all of it. Yeah, all of it. All right, okay, over here we're talking about um, you, like some people might create a My Story project for their epic build, and then when you click on the different sprites or touch them, they would talk about all about who that student is and what they like to do and where they're from and things like that. Um, and then I've seen teachers like integrate that project. So instead of making the my story, uh, they did like a life cycle of a mealworm. 
in it, and then they have each stage of the life cycle, and as you click on it, it talks about that stage and what it's doing, and then it goes around the whole life cycle uh, until you've completed it. So there are a lot of interesting ways to kind of take a simple project and kind of remix it to integrate it in with your class content. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about pacing a little bit later. Um, what I want to do for about 20 minutes here uh, is just think about the big ideas we're going to be learning uh, this cycle, this learning cycle. So we have three of them. Um, the first one is a sequence, uh, which would be just a set of instructions that you follow step by step in order. Uh, because computers, we, we kind of give them a lot of credit, like, oh, they're so smart now. Uh, but computers are actually kind of dumb, and they really need us to tell them what to do. Uh, so to do that, we create sequences of code, uh, which would just be step one, step two, step three, step four, step five here. And um, in this sequence, uh, in Scratch Junior, you actually have to press on the sprite to then start it to get it to say yes, uh, or whatever it's saying here, and then move here. Uh, so a sequence is going to be a big idea for this cycle. Um, the second one uh, is this idea of looping. So a lot of you already figured out looping, and you may have seen a forever loop, uh, which would make something just go on and on forever and ever and ever. Uh, there are other loops, it's like a repeat loop, so maybe you just want it to repeat 10 times. Uh, there are other loops where maybe it's like repeat until touching edge, uh, or repeat until touching actor or sprite. Um, so for the fourth grade teachers, later you'll be making a projectile game, uh, and you'll actually have whatever's kind of the projectile is moving until it touches something. So that would be uh, a loop with a conditional, uh, which would be our third idea. Um, a conditional is simply sort of a like true-false statement. Uh, and later on, maybe more middle school, high school, uh, you can call that binary. So it's true-false. So if touching an actor, then get point. Or if touching an enemy, then die or something. Uh, and, and that's how all for, video for games the work. They have these conditionals or these true false statements. Uh, and these three concepts here are like you're building an awesome foundation then for later computer science. Uh, and I promise you, even a kindergartner uh, will pick this up really quick. I mean, it's amazing um, seeing what they can do. Uh, they end up talking about loops and things like that. So. Um, what I want to do just for maybe 15 minutes um, is with someone near you, um, ideally in groups of three, you each would pick one of these and just do a little research online. So go online, um, type in sequence or looping or true false, um, and just see what you can find. And then share what you find with the people in your group so you're all kind of learning from each other. Uh, and then we'll do a little share out here at the end uh, just so uh, you're exploring these ideas and becoming more familiar with them, and then we'll kind of come together and share so we can build our collective knowledge. Hopefully, it's a lot more digestible for you um, and, and a little less overwhelming, uh, which I definitely think it, it will be. Um, so, you start with the cycle launch uh, here in, in week one, and you do like a pre assessment just to kind of see what knowledge they have about computer science uh, and build maybe a simple project. Um, and then in week two, you get into the big idea. So like, what are we learning with this project? What are we trying to do with this project? What, what is our big idea here? Um, and then we'll go more into this later, but in week two, um, you can introduce the big idea and then go through the lesson and that might be it. Um, or you might have students who are kind of flying through this and they're doing really well and they want to learn more. So in week two, we have something called extensions. So you, you'll teach week two as is. And then you may want to, depending on how much time you have, um, and this is where you'll work with a coach uh, who'll be coming in once a week, once every other week, um, and you'll think, all right, like I want to teach extension 2A and 2B type thing, uh, just to give my students more knowledge. Um, so that's where you start to incorporate a little more knowledge here. Uh, but just know, if you go through these seven lessons, uh, and that's, that's all you're doing, then you'll be fine. And you're going to have a final project and they're going to be learning what they need to learn. Uh, but you may decide later, hey, I want to extend a little bit and, and add a little more to these projects. Uh, and then in week three, we introduce the Epic Build, which is really their final project. And, and like, what are they going to be doing? And what are they building? Um, 
And then they start to plan in week three, and we'll do that in just a little bit. We've got a planning document here inside your booklet, um, and we've created different planning documents for each grade. Um, so you, you plan it out, and they get an idea of all right, where are we going here. Uh, and then week four, week five, they're building for that epic build. So they're building their project, they're working towards completion. Uh, and then in week six, uh, we do what's called debugging or troubleshooting. So uh, you're checking to see, does my project work? Uh, is it doing what I want it to do? If not, do I need to go back and figure it out and debug it? Um, and some students, they might be ready to go. Their project's working perfectly. Um, and then they want to extend their project. Uh, so then we have suggestions and lessons for how to take your project and make it uh, just even more sort of epic or interesting. Um, and these extensions all would build off uh, any of the uh, ones from week two, any of the concepts from week two. So let's say week two, you teach how to use the microphone. Uh, well, in, in week six here, you might do an extension where you use the microphone to add something to your project. Um, so you may go through again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you're done, and you've got a project, and it's ready to go for the showcase. Um, or you may get to week two and do like week two, week two A, two B, two C, uh, and then they build until they get to week six, and then maybe do like a six A, six B, six C uh, to extend the project. Um, and then in week seven, you're really prepping for the showcase, and you're working on your presenting skills. Uh, and we have a sentence frames document where they're sort of writing out what they'll be talking about and explaining what they did uh, for this cycle. Um, so that is sort of the seven week uh, pacing there. We'll keep going into that more and more today. Um, but, so here's our in-depth look at it. Uh, basically covers everything I just talked about here. Um, yeah. Any questions so far on this aspect? Just know you will have a coach coming in, um, again, either every week or every other week, uh, to kind of work with you and to assist you, to kind of say like, hey, do you understand this? Or can I help clarify something? Um, is it going really well and you want to add a few new concepts in week two? Let's take a look at those. Um, you might get to week six and you say, hey, like these, my student projects look amazing, but I want to add more to it so they can help navigate that as well. Um, so. Yeah, just know you have someone there kind of guiding you along the way and feel, feel free to talk to your coach and kind of say like, oh, I'm frustrated or this is hard or I'm uh, struggling with this because that's, that's what they're there for to kind of assist and help navigate and things like that. Um, and coaches will also be modeling, so they'll come into your classroom and they'll, nav they'll model lessons as well uh, to sort of show um, what it might look like, how this might be done in the classroom. Um, and again, we have videos, so uh, we'll, we'll look at the website later, but there'll be videos all on our website and everything to help navigate that too. So um, you might want to show a video. I know when I used to teach, we'd show a video, we'd watch it together, uh, and then they go and they try it, and then we kind of reflect on how it went. So I wasn't even doing a ton of direct instruction all the time, where I was using sort of videos as a guide uh, to do that. All right. So again, uh, you have your options. So you can complete the seven lessons in order as is. Um, and you don't have to modify the pacing at all. Uh, I believe, I'm pretty sure you have 11 weeks uh, for this cycle though. So that would be, uh, assuming no testing or anything gets in the way, that'd be like, hey, we could add uh, some more concepts and some more um, extensions, maybe three or four more, to this seven lesson cycle. Uh, but you don't have to. Um, you have two cycles. So the second cycle would be probably after winter break um, when they get into, um, well, let's see, second, third, fourth, fifth grade are robotics. Uh, and then K and one uh, is building with Legos. Um, and you're learning ideas of like looping when you're stacking the Legos and stuff. Um, but K and one aren't actually building robots. Um, where second, third grade are using Lego We Do, it's called. And you literally, you build a little robot and then you program it to do stuff. Um, and then, yeah, the kids love it, and then they, they make it do things. And then in fourth and fifth grade, uh, with EV3 robotics, um, there are like sensors and stuff. So you have like a color sensor on a robot, so you have a self-driving car, and you program it so it drives, and if it detects like black or red, it maybe it stops. And then if it detects green, maybe it goes really fast. Um, or maybe you put on the ultrasonic sensor, 
and it can detect objects using sound. So it's pretty cool stuff uh, getting into the robotics. Uh, but the scratch here helps them build up to that um, later on. And then that'll, that'll be it then after the two cycles um, for you. So, all right, so those are, that's option one again, seven weeks. You got it all, you're done. Projects look good, showcase, have fun, celebrate. Um, option two here, uh, which is really preferred just because, again, you, you'll have 11 weeks, so we do have a little more time to build in some extra stuff. Um, or I was a teacher, right? right? There's always different things happening in vacations and holidays and stuff. Um, but this is where you can work with your coach and uh, think, all right, no, maybe I want to take teach concept B and concept D, uh, which then later would line up with extension B and extension D. Um, and with, with the extensions, uh, it, a lot of times it starts really easy. We want like a big win for everyone. So if you're making a My Story project, you might have four sprites and they all talk about you and they tell your story, uh, but then you want to extend by adding a cool backdrop. Or you want to extend by adding like fun effects and sounds and things like that. So uh, the extensions really just enhance the projects, make them more engaging, more fun. Um, I think you'll find a lot of your students will start to extend on their own anyway without any instruction. Uh, that's been my experience. Um, all right, so it's kind of our two pathways here. And uh, we move on. So um, we are going to give it a try together here. And you may, if you don't, how many people have Scratch? Real quick, raise a hand on their tablet. So if you don't have Scratch, I would probably team up with someone for this because um, we're going to use Scratch Junior for this. And we're going to make actually a uh, game sort of menu option. Um, so when you look here, any video game you've ever played, you can click on something and to go to like level one or level two or go to whatever different options there are. Uh, and that's similar to a website, like you click on the start menu or the home menu or click on men's clothing. I don't know, to go look at pants. <laughs> but this idea in, in computer science would come up all the time. And you have a screen, you can click on things to go to something else. Uh, and that's what we're gonna be making here uh, together in a little bit. Um, so to do that, uh, we're going to go and we're going to think about kind of the first lesson. So this is the first lesson, day one, lesson one. What are we doing? Uh, and this is right here you see the pre-assessment. So all of you will have in your in your uh, packet your, that I'll be handing out later um, in your curriculum a pre-assessment type thing. And it says, I want to see what you learned about computer science last year. So some people have it where this is their second year doing this. Some people are more first year. Um, and then it might be just what do you know about computer science type thing. Um, and then you have an activity. So just kind of jump in there and you see how it goes. So our first activity here is to create a Scratch Junior project with the following. Uh, two sprites, a single backdrop, uh, use the graphic editor if you remember how to, and then add code to your sprites. So it's really open-ended. Some students might create this huge sequence of code. Some might have like a couple blocks scattered around that don't do anything. Uh, and this will give you an idea though, like, all right, who knows sort of what they're doing or who's kind of intuitively this is working for them and then who's kind of uh, lost a little bit and like they've never seen this. Um, but this is just going to be our first little project here that we jump into. Um, and before we do it though, I will get to walk you through the, the interface real quickly and then I'll have you do this one. Um, but we're going to do this here, we'll do activity one, uh, and then we're just going to go step by step. Uh, until we get to sort of the seventh activity, and we'll be planning, and we'll be debugging and everything. Um, and this will take us most of the rest of the morning here. Um, so that's what we'll be doing. Before we do that, real quick, let me go back here and go back to the interface. Um, so when you open Scratch Junior, uh, you will see over here, and I think a lot of you already know this, these are your sprites, um, so you can add new ones by pressing on the plus sign. Um, once you add a new one, if you click on this little paintbrush here next to it, that'll allow you to paint it and change its colors and do things to it if you want to specialize um, or make it just more interesting. Over here on the other side, these are your backdrops. Um, and so if you want to add more than one backdrop, you click on the plus sign here. And when you're first adding your first backdrop, 
you click right here on number five uh, where it says change backdrop. So you're adding backdrops over here, you're adding sprites over here. Uh, for younger students, they do get confused <laughs> sometimes, and they might add uh, like a sprite as a backdrop when they're actually trying to add a sprite or something. But they, they get it pretty quick. Um, other things, right here where it says ABC, so right up here, that's how you can add like text to the backdrop. Um, so you can add a title or something uh, to it. So you can put my story by, and then put your name. Uh, or you can put like instructions or something. Uh, and then down here, so at the bottom, you have all your different blocks. Uh, you have the yellow ones, which are the event blocks that I was talking about before. Uh, and those start your program. So maybe it starts when you press the green flag, or maybe it starts when you touch the sprite, or maybe they start when they bump into each other. Uh, and then you have the blue motion blocks. Um, so you can either move left and right and up and down. Uh, and we have to think a lot about direction. And with kindergartners, it's, it's good to review directions with them or in the first grade, um, just so they get that idea. And then we have rotation, so spinning a certain number of times. Um, and then there's this one over here at the end. This is like a jump block. It kind of goes up and then down. So that would make it go up a certain number of times and then come back down. Um, it's almost like simulating gravity, kind of. Like later on, you might get into this idea of gravity in later grade. Um, and then this last one, that would make it return home. So let's say you have it moving 100 times, and then you have this block on the end of your sequence, then it would just make it return home. Um, so you got your blue motion, and then you have your purple looks blocks, uh, and then green sound, um, and then these orange ones are your loops and control, because you can control what's happening. Uh, and then the red ones are for sort of stopping your project. Um, and I'm just in the Scratch Junior website right now, so if you, if you want like an interactive guide, you can just go to their website and click on Learn, um, and they have this sort of interactive guide here. Uh, but you, again, you got your motion blocks, you got your looks. Um, you can see in looks, you can add one where you can type in sentences here. Um, you can make sprites get smaller, larger. So maybe if you're doing something about like the food chain, it's like, ooh, I eat this, like I'm a shark and I eat this fish, and now my shark gets bigger and the fish disappears or something. That would be actually a pretty simple project to program. Um, and then, yeah, we've got the hide in the show. So looks relates to how they look and what they're doing. Sound. Um, sounds are really, really fun and they enhance your projects. Kids will probably find them on their own. Uh, you may need to set some kind of rule around like, no sounds right now or something. So I, I definitely walked into room, like a first grade room where they all just figured it out and there's sounds everywhere kind of thing. Um, so just when you are thinking about like management, um, you may want to set some guidelines around sounds. Uh, but they are amazing to specialize projects and you know, make them personal. And then the control box here. So you have like, maybe you have to wait 10 seconds before something happens. Um, you have a speed one, you can go fast or slow. Here you get stop, and then they get the repeat. And then here at the end, this solid one is like a stop sign, stops it. Um, this is your forever loop here. You can see it goes in a loop, sort of forever. Um, and then here, you can actually have a change to the next scene. So maybe you're telling a story with more than one scene. Um, so you can have maybe your sprite walks across the screen, and then when it gets to the end, you have this to go to your next backdrop and then you can switch to your next backdrop. So those are all the different blocks uh, in there. And, all right, so I think that's pretty good. So let me go back here. So let's, let's go ahead and do activity one, where you add at least two sprites, you add one backdrop, and you add some kind of code to these sprites. So to add sprites, remember you're clicking over here, and then to add a backdrop, you're gonna click on this uh, right here to add a backdrop. Um, and then go ahead and just kind of see what you can make them do. And we'll take a few minutes to do this first activity. Uh, and then when people are ready, we'll just keep working through uh, each of the seven lessons until we have a game menu. Um, yeah, so I'll go to the paintbrush.
right up top in the corner. And then um, now I have a paint brush, so I can pick a color and I can pick the size of the line and I can color something. Um, I can make a circle, uh, I can change colors, make squares, triangles, um, all kinds of interesting things. Um, click over here and you can rotate stuff. Um, so this is the graphic editor. Um, it's kind of like paint or a tool you may have used before, or Photoshop even. Um, one thing I love about computer science is that you do get to make your own art or manipulate images or uh, just change and remix things. Um, and like later on, students might get into like layering and, and different kind of almost like graphic design type stuff. Um, but the kids really like using these things uh, just because it makes things more personal and fun. Um, so now I have one kind of weird background. Um, and now I want to add my second background. So I will click on the plus sign right over here. And I see I have the cat there now. Um, now if I want to get rid of that cat because I don't like it, um, I'm going to press on its nose for a moment. And I hit X. I can also press over here for a moment. And then you can just delete the sprite um, so that it's not there. Um, and now I want to add a second background. So I'm pressing there. And now, uh, let's see, we'll do maybe 19. All right, so I have background one, and I have background two, and I have a sprite there. Um, so I want to now program uh, this sprite so that when I press on it, it will go to the second backdrop. So I brought out this second event here, the wind touch trigger event, and in the red uh, blocks, I see this one show up here, so I'll put it there. And now whenever I press on the cat, it switches back up. Um, so that's very similar to our big idea of a game menu, just that there's something you can press on and it takes you somewhere else. Um, then this might be for a video game, it might take you to a video game, but there might just be a story. And that's one page of the story, and then you have the second page of the story, um, and you can kind of continue on. I think through six different pages. I think that there is a limit. I think it's six. Um, you might want to explore that though. All right, so that was that step. Um, does everyone just take another minute or two to make sure you feel comfortable adding backgrounds, uh, painting backgrounds, uh, programming that sprite, just to do that basic thing. Maybe we'll take two more minutes to work on that. Um, if you're good, maybe talk to someone next to you to make sure that they are feeling good about this. All right, so two more minutes. And then we'll keep going. So lesson two, uh, it introduced us to the big idea for this cycle. And the big idea is to build a game menu with options. Uh, so later when we get to Epic Build, uh, which will be coming up in lesson three, uh, you'll build an actual game menu um, that will take you to different games. Um, but for right now, you're just kind of testing out the big idea, making sure you have the basics. Um, and we went through and we did all that. So that would have just been one lesson, one week. Um, not, not too big a deal. Uh, here is where you might say, all right, I want to add a couple more concepts to lesson two. Um, so maybe you, you show your students the uh, like record your own voice uh, lesson. Um, or maybe you show them how to add their picture to a sprite or something. Um, but that, those where you add on more concepts here in lesson two, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, so then we go to lesson three, where we have the epic build launch. Uh, so this is where you're like, all right, we're going to be making this game or this thing, uh, and it's going to be awesome, and we are going to plan it. So lesson three is really all about understanding what we're doing and then planning for it. Um, so you can see here, use the knowledge of the big idea, creating a game menu uh, to create an epic game gallery. Uh, so first we're going to observe the game gallery menu video, and we'll do that in a moment. Um, and then we'll think about what we notice in this. Uh, and then we will use the planning document, uh, which you all have in your uh, booklet for today, and you'll actually plan it out. So let's go ahead and we will watch the video first. 
and then we'll talk about it, uh, and then we'll do home planning. Yep. Alright, here we go. So, start over. The big idea you will learn while creating your game gallery is how to make and code a menu. Have you used a game menu before? Awesome. Remember, a menu gives you options or choices. When I tap on a spaceship, I go to the spaceship game. Here's a video game. So to move the spaceship, you're touching the arrows. And then... When I complete the game, I return to the main menu. When I tap on the car, I go to the game with the car in. Each of the games is a little bit different. We'll talk how to make the simple games later on. The real goal here is to make a menu. All right. So again, we have um, videos for, or we will have videos on the website for every single lesson, pretty much, and concept. Um, and I'll be showing you the website a little bit later. Uh, here we are. So, um, what did you notice about the features of a game menu? Any ideas? And how many do they relate to any of the three big concepts we talked about before? Like sequence, or true false? Um, and what's the big idea of a game menu? What are we trying to do? Well, I think if you're connecting, um, what I like that they showed is that you can create games different ways and then depending on which one you choose you're going into different types of games so you might have a game that's sequencing or you might have a game that's looping so you can have variety just through using the different processes. It seems like the game menu itself is true or false because if I click on the card yeah. then I'm going to the card game. Exactly. And if you don't then you don't go to the card game. Yeah. So we're built in right there is one of our big ideas kind of if, if the true false um, awesome. All right, so uh, why don't we go ahead and um, plan for a few minutes where I want you to actually draw what your game menu will look like. And it might look just like this one here. Um, it may look completely different, uh, but do a sketch. Uh, this is part of the design process. And when you look at the computer science standards, the idea of planning, uh, just like in writing, uh, it's really important. So we'll have them plan it out. So go ahead and fill out this document. It just takes a few minutes to fill it out. Um, and then we will share our documents for a moment and move on. Right. Press on the plus sign here, make a new project. I'm just going to demo. Oh, yeah, whatever is best for you. I can work in total darkness. Or <laughs> um, is that good, everybody? Awesome. So again, to get rid of the cat, and especially in K in first grade, uh, just get, getting rid of that cat can be challenging sometimes. Um, so you really, if you press like right on its nose for a moment, uh, you'll get that little X cell pop up, and then you can get rid of it. Um, and now for the first backdrop, you press right up here, and then to draw your own, you press on the paint symbol there, and I'm using the paint bucket down there, and I'll just fill in uh, I don't know, a nice light blue color, uh, and then I'll go over here to create some squares. So there's one. I'm doing this tech break, so it's not perfect. You get the idea. So there's a couple of different squares. Go back to the paint bucket. And we'll do orange and red. All right, so there's three squares for my background. Looks pretty good. Um, I can click up here to add some kind of title. Let's say, like, click on the spreads. Whatever you had in your plan. Um, so now that's on there as well. Uh, you can put like the game designer, like by and put your name or something. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and. I have a quick question. Yeah? When you were creating that background, if you were to draw like a perfect square, is there a way to copy it so that you don't have to redraw it each time or no? Yes. Let's see if I can remember. Because there's the uh, stamp here. Okay. Yeah. So that um, 
And then you, are you still able to change the color and all that? Yeah. So get that, move it over or whatever, and then yeah, just go back to paint like that and change the color. So yeah, that, that's very helpful. Uh, you may see these. This is a little more advanced. Um, but when I clicked on that and then clicked on this again, I got these uh, little options where you can kind of stretch it. So um, this is this is a little bit later, but it's called like vector graphics where they use formulas. So it's like a mathematical formula so you can like stretch things and like shrink them and stuff. But we don't really get into that um, just yet. So um, that's just another cool option though. And kids will discover it and they'll start making weird shapes and stuff. Um, all right, so I've got my background for number one. Uh, I'm on number two. I'll press up here again, and I'll just pick another one, and I'll do a third one. All right, and uh, whatever. Um, all right, so we've got a couple different backgrounds. I'll go back up front here, and now I'll press over here to add some sprites. So let's do this kind of quick. Put one there. And do this one, and those right here, and I'll leave it at that for now. Um, and now, if I go back to the sprite, and this is something you want to point out to students. You want to make sure you're on the sprite that you want to be programming. Um, a lot of times, like they mean to be programming uh, this alien one, uh, but they're accidentally on the rabbit or something. Uh, so just kind of remind the students, like, hey, make sure you're on the right sprite, kind of thing. Uh, but now, I've got this, so when touched, when you go to red, it can switch to backdrop. Maybe I'll do backdrop three, actually. That's more the um, space one. Um, and then I can take this code here, and I can drag it up and drop it on the other sprite. And now that sprite has the same code, so you don't have to redo it all. You just have to change it a little bit. Um, so now, it takes me to space. And it takes me to a oh, nice nature scene. Um, and I could add one more in there to finish my menu. Uh, but why don't you take a few minutes here to actually draw your background and add some sprites and just program them so that it'll switch to the right page uh, when you want it to move to that page. All right? I'll be walking around helping. Um, and then later we'll think about the game and, and the controls and all that stuff. And then we're going to move on to the next screen. Uh, just so we're kind of moving along here and you're getting the big ideas. Um, this afternoon you'll have a lot more time to build the actual full complete project. So uh, here is our next short video. Um, and here we go. Here we go. Let's review. What is the big idea for your epic build? Big idea, make a game. That's right. To create a menu for your game game. Why are we making simple games? Very good. So we have a few game choices to put in our menu. The first game I will show you is a spaceship game. In this game, the rocket needs to avoid the asteroid. If I hit an asteroid, my ship will have to start over again. If I reach Mars, I will be taken back to the game gallery menu. Just going to pause real quick. Thinking about those three big ideas uh, from the beginning, these obstacles, so these little asteroids are just going up and down, uh, those would be on a loop, forever loop. So back and forth, up and down. Um, when we start to program the, like, if, rocket touches uh, asteroid, then something happens. So it's the true false idea there. Um, maybe every time it touches the asteroid, it goes back to the start. Or so maybe it makes a really loud noise or something. Uh, but that's the true false idea. Uh, and then the sequence idea, we're really using for everything because we're always making some kind of sequence of code. It might only be two blocks, but it's something that's in there. So that's just a quick review of our three big concepts from earlier. All right, here we go. Oops, I hit an asteroid. Let's see if I can get all the way to Mars this time. And there it is. I'm back to the game gallery menu. Let's take a look at the code.
We have a start on tap for instructions. Arrow keys to move our spaceship. And a start on bump to send our spaceship back to the beginning. Do you remember using these blocks? You used most of these, maybe not the messages. That's right. You used these in the second grade at Bill, the maze game. We'll take a look, closer look at these later in the cycle. Another simple game is the car game. In the car game, you collect mushrooms. Makes perfect sense, right? <laughs> just like Angry Birds and lots of other games. They don't really need to make sense. They just need to be fun. Let's take a look at the code for the car game and see what the code is for the mushrooms as well. keys as a spaceship game. I'll show you how to do that in another video. The code on the mushrooms looks like this. When the green flag is clicked, all the mushrooms appear, and we bump, when we bump into a mushroom with a car, the mushroom hides and the pop sound is made. Making games is a lot of fun, so enjoy making simple games for your friends. Um, so, we've got just a little bit of time here. Um, we're going to, in a little while, you'll need to actually add player sprites and things like that. So I would, I would say let's focus on like one game. Uh, and then we need to actually create some arrow keys, like up, down, left, right, uh, that, so we can program those later. Um, and then we also want to have some kind of player spray. So if I go to my iPad here, and let's make sure I'm connected. All right, so I'm going to go to my second level here, and I, I need to create some arrow keys so I can control my spray. So I'm going to go to the new spray section here, um, and I already have one that I've made before. So I'll go ahead and I'll put that in there, um, and yeah. then I'll go over here, and over here, and now oh, I will flip it, like up, down. I can put these over here. I might want to change the colors and do it a little fast here. How do you make them smaller again? Oh, let me show everyone that. Just so it's fair. So we'll flip that that way. All right, so let's say these are too big. And I want my spread to be smaller. Even if I go back here and I add one more spread. Just try to find a big one. It's going to be. Here we go. All right, so that giraffe is huge, right? and it doesn't fit in that little box I made. Uh, so you need to, when the green flag is pressed, uh, so people are always going to need to press the green flag. Um, then you go to the purple looks, so it changes the way something looks. Um, and then you use this one right here, it says shrink. And right now, it just shrinks a little bit. So you have to test, yeah, let's try eight. And it might be too small. Okay, so a little trial and error. Perfect. So that is how uh, you will get your sprites to shrink. Um, you would just have this code here, and then you would put another block for when it's touched. Um, and that gets it to always start on your game menu. Uh, so now I'm here, 
and I'm starting to program, or I'm starting to make just these arrow keys. So um, I would pick just one game from your screen here, and I would then go to it and just make four arrows up, down, left, and right. And we're going to program those uh, together in just a little bit. Uh, but maybe we'll take three to five minutes just to make um, enough down, left, and right arrow, and then we'll think about how do I program this to make my sprite move around. Okay. All right. So five minutes. Make your arrows. Okay. Uh, but so we've got a brand new curriculum again, much more streamlined than last year's kind of huge one. Um, and the, the idea then is uh, one hour a week, uh, you're able to teach like one lesson, uh, and after seven weeks or here, maybe 11 weeks, you have a final project uh, that students can show off when their parents come in. And, um, it's just kind of a fun event, the epic build. You have like a keynote, uh, maybe in the gym or something, parents come in, there's a couple of student presenters talking about what they were doing, why, uh, and then they show off, and uh, it's just kind of a fun event for the day. Uh, but here we are, you got your first page, um, and I'm just flipping through it kind of quick here. Um, breaks down sort of the different contents in here. Um, on the actual website, we'll go into this more in a little bit, but that's what this page here looks like. So the green boxes are for extensions. So let's say you make a My Story project and it only has five sprites on it. You press on the sprites and they tell it, say, hey, I'm 15. I like tacos or whatever you want to say. An extension might be to add a cool background to it or add special effects to make it change the color or something. So extensions are all going to be in green, uh, and those would come at lesson six. So uh, in here, you don't have any extensions or anything. You get those all on the website over here. And I'll show you how to navigate those. Um, all, all that content's being uploaded like as we speak, so I don't think the iPad stuff's up there today, but by the time you start, it would be up there. Um, basically, what I've been doing all summer is instructional design of other people. We've just been building and building and building based off the feedback from last year to try to make it uh, user-friendly as possible for you. Um, but, all right, so also on the website, uh, we'll look at like content integration and uh, different concepts and skills. Um, and then we put through the pacing a little bit already, but that'd be the next page. So seven weeks, seven lessons. Uh, you should be good to go. Uh, the lessons we didn't just do, we didn't debug our projects. So we didn't like go in and do a little checklist like, uh, all right, I press on Sprite and it takes you to your screen. Check. Uh, I have an enemy Sprite or an obstacle Sprite. Check. My keyboard controls work. Check. So each week you have different things you're working on. Uh, those are pretty closely related to this idea of the design process and uh, just how like, software engineers and really any type of designer, how they work from brainstorming and planning to building to testing and refining. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the next page. Um, year one versus year two. Uh, again, year one, we have this giant curriculum here. A lot of really cool projects, but you might do one project a week, uh, which would require you to spend, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes a day in your classroom. Um, where this year, it's more one hour a week to work to one big project, not a series of small projects. Uh, and then you're kind of rushing at the end for your final big project. Um, so we're, we're just trying to figure out how do we get the big ideas that we want and, and teach the content um, in a way that is effective for you and works in your classroom. Because I know. Uh, teacher schedule is really tough, like every minute is accounted for, so um, one hour a week and you should be good to go. Um, Alright, so we're moving in here and notice around two and six, you have those little arrows. So that is where you're adding on additional stuff. And since you'll have 11 weeks, uh, you may add on um, four different things. So maybe it's two in week two, two concepts, uh, and then maybe in week six, it's two extensions to make the actual Epic Build project better. Um, so that is what the pacing looks like a little bit. Uh, all right, and then we'll move on. We've got some glossary terms. So each person would have a different glossary. Um, I have second grade, so I see the glossary we have backdrop, graphic editor, debug, extension. It's all part of the glossary. 
Uh, and then we move on from there, and the class rate keeps going with some pictures. Uh, and then you get into the cycle launch, which we all did. Uh, Pre-assessment, small project, and that was that for that day. Um, notice we do have like a description, so what you'll be doing with the students here. And then if you go to the next page, this actually has photos for you to help break down what is happening in each one of those descriptions. So um, it should be pretty straightforward, but it says things like, um, let's see, like, uh, have students who are brand new scratch pair up with the returning and complete pre-assessment together. Okay. Um, Students can choose to scratch your projects on their iPad by tapping the question mark and selecting from the sample projects provided. So then if I look over here, I see that it actually breaks that down. So it's just trying to break it down really clear with pictures what you're doing. You can just follow this step by step. Um, you might even want to project this or something for students. It's kind of up to you. Is this all on the website? Um, like yeah, again, this is all on the website. And on the website, then you have a link where you can just click on the video and stuff like that. Uh, so you might see, like over here, there's like a little video icon over under resources. You'll be able to click on that on the website to go to the actual video. Um, so you'll want to become familiar with the website. Uh, again, we didn't have your all your emails, so we just need to get those so we can get your login and then you're good to go. So there'll be communication about that for you. Uh, I guess when it's ready. Um, you, I know you said we are going to do it about an hour a week. Is it okay if it is split up, or is it supposed to be like a whole hour? Yeah, we were just talking about that. I mean, I think it makes sense. Whatever makes sense for your classroom, in a way, would work best. It's like, like, hey, like we're thinking 30 minutes is going to work pretty well. An hour is a lot of time. Right. Um, so, yeah, kind of breaking it up would, would work pretty well. Um, some weeks you might have more time or something, and then you look at the extensions or the concepts kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, like around holidays, things get kind of weird sometimes, so you can kind of adjust as you need to uh, for your classroom. Um, also, on this page, like, you'll see resources, key terms, um, and then there are a few like reflection type questions or formative assessment type questions. So, sort of like, tell me, like, what is your epic build? So, we give ideas for just how can you check to make sure your students know what they're doing and what they're talking about. Um, and then even some reflection questions. So we say something like, reflect for five minutes, uh, use the reflection prompts as a guide if you need to. Um, so that would be over here, and then we have some reflection questions uh, that are suggestions for you. Um, teachers are always pretty good at coming up with reflections. Uh, we wanted to have something for you there. Um, all right, so we went through week one, week two, you get the big idea. Uh, week three, the epic build, launch, and planning. Uh, weeks four and five, you're actually building an epic build. And then week six, uh, you get into the debugging, which we didn't do together yet. Um, might you have a debugging checklist for every grade and make sure it works. And if it works, then you add on to your project. Uh, and then week seven is all about the showcase and uh, prepping for the showcase and writing down your sentences and what you're going to be saying. Um, and then after week seven, you're good to go. You got your project and uh, kind of time to celebrate with friends and family. And, um, it's normally just a really great event uh, where we show off everything we've been doing. So um, that's sort of what the curriculum looks like. Let me quickly go through up here. We start in block-based coding. Uh, so that's where everyone starts. Uh, and then the second cycle, you'll do making and robotics. Um, and then some places have this other one here, this, this text-based one. Um, so right now we're starting on block-based coding, fourth grade. I see the cover. Uh, I see the glossary here. So everything you have there is also online. Uh, and then we've got the overview and the pacing breakdown for you. Um, so that's all overview and pacing orange right up top. Uh, and then here, is where we'd find the lessons. So I clicked on lessons, and right over here, I have my fourth grade lesson. One, two, just all the different lessons are right there for you. Um, so it's handy, so maybe I'll just click on lesson one, and you've got it all right here. Reflections, assessments. Um, 
And then there are built in some like blocks to explore. So let's say a student gets done really quick or something, um, you can kind of point them in this direction. Or there are a couple ideas normally for uh, quick ways to kind of extend and add on. Uh, here, in green are project extensions. So we click here, let's see if these are up. As of Friday, these weren't up yet. They're, they're working on uploading. Oh yeah, it looks like they are. So we have uh, cloned projectiles for an extension. So in, the, in fourth grade, you make a projectile game where you have something kind of launching across the screen. Um, and there's this idea where you can clone those projectiles. And that's a much more complicated idea. Uh, but for students who are ready to kind of tackle that, you can point them in this direction and there'll be a video for it and everything um, to kind of extend their projects and make them uh, a little more epic uh, to build on their learning. Uh, here in blue, we have the concepts and skills. Uh, so this is where you can build on just additional knowledge as well in week two or in lesson two. Uh, and then here is where uh, you'll have more information about integration and things like that. Uh, sort of that idea of like, all right, the main project is my story, but I want to integrate. I don't want to just make it my story, so I'm going to do the life cycle or something like that. Uh, or in fifth grade, it's called a story game. And maybe instead of just saying like, hey, I'm Bob, help me defeat this thing, you're saying, no, I want you to summarize this book you just read. Uh, and and I know the school I worked in last year, we did Roald Dahl. They all read Roald Dahl. So they picked their book. I made one for Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory. Had a title slide, like, hey, this is my book. This is what it's about. Help me to get through the Chocolate Factory. And then once they get through it, then you have like a summary type thing at the end. Um, so some people might want to do more of like an integration uh, right away there. Um, and we'll have ideas under that section uh, there. So you have your overview, you have your lessons uh, and extensions and everything. Uh, and again, that's just up here on the website. And um, it's just it being updated daily. Uh, we just built this based on feedback to try and make something very streamlined for you that you can access and um, have access to videos and everything. So uh, hopefully it's kind of your one-stop shop to help you teach computer science. Um, Is, are there recommendations for or like um, resources for kids that struggle with coding? Because you know, there's definitely the extensions for because I know I'm going to have kids that just get it, but there's a few that you might worry about being behind. Is there any? Yeah, that's that that's where in the pacing in week six it sort of says um, as they're debugging the kids are ready to extend let them go extend but the, the yeah but if, if someone needs more like one-on-one -on -one intervention or something mm -hmm. then that's kind of their time to catch up and get more help sort of thing um, so there's not really like another section i guess right now saying like yeah, yeah. Or i'm sure the coaches will yes. have some tips like if they're really not good like because we're not experts, so sometimes a, a coach might be able to like explain it to them like this, and it'll make sense. And Absolutely, and I would and I would work with your coach, and if you're seeing like patterns or something too, say like, hey, I've noticed this pattern. Like, what do you recommend? Um, but you also might just point that student like to a, to a video or something, yeah. and, and say, oh, yeah, this is the video you really need to watch, and then come back to me or something too. I find too like that. Um, but I always yeah. worry that they just take over and do it for them. And yeah. Do it for them. yeah. And, and that's another, it's a tough balance to like just doing it for them versus like, and you really kind of want more open ended questions. And like, well, if you want to do this, how would we do it kind of thing? Right. <laughs> um, instead of just giving them answers. But it, it can be tricky kind of finding that balance. Um, and normally kids have a ton of fun. You may see a kid get a little stressed or something because other kids are kind of moving along quick and uh, he's falling behind or she's falling behind. So they maybe do assist a little more and just kind of help them out. But um, overall, I think it's it's pretty it's really manageable. Like one hour a week, you sh the kids should probably be able to stick with it. Um, my guess is you'll find a lot of wanting to extend and kind of push it farther would be what I would imagine. Um, but yeah, so you'll very shortly have access to all this, and um, I would just bookmark it. Um, yeah, kind of between the two, you have a lot of resources. Just working with your coach, um, and, and definitely use your coach as, a, as kind of a guide and uh, collaborate with them. And if things aren't going too well, let them know, and if things are going great, let them know. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're just here to kind of help. Uh, the idea is to really get you so you feel comfortable kind of teaching um, this stuff on your own a little bit. And I know it's brand new for all of you, so right now you're like, oh, there's a lot of different new things. 
Uh, but I think after these seven weeks, you'll feel pretty good. Right? You'll be uh, maybe surprised uh, how well you know the stuff. Um, it's really, I, don't, I think it's just a ton of fun, too, once you start to get into it. So, yeah. Question, like, do we have access to like, a home page where I can like, have my whole class, like, like, what's Johnny Cake's working on, and like, view it, or do I have to like, go to that child's physical iPad to do it? Scratch Junior, you have to go to the iPad. Tinker. There may be, I don't know if it's in the free lesson uh, where you can like go into their account type thing. Because um, there's a pain. Yeah. Yeah, that we, we're not. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have that option, but it's something I can look into. Right, that is, a good, it's like, where are they at kind of thing. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can, can I um, talk a little more about like the big picture here? And um, I just feel like I have to introduce myself in case of teachers who don't know me, but I'm Dane Elman, and one of my roles is the liaison between Go to the Future and our uh, district. So if you have any concerns, you know, or questions at any point, you can, you can come to me or you can talk to your principal. Um, some of you, or, or a lot of you said that you have no experience, had no experience with coding before you uh, arrived here today, and now you have a little bit of experience, and, and what you saw is really what coding looks like at all the levels um, in our district. So from kindergarten to fifth grade, it's all this block-based coding um, in different apps, but it gets, of course, more complex as the kids get older. Um, but whether it's Scratch Junior or Tinker or even when we get to the Lego Robotics, which is also on the iPad, it's going to be all these commands you have the, the options of using and you just have to drag those commands in the right order um, to get the, you know, the object on the screen or to get the actual physical Lego robot to, to do what you want it to do. Um, but it's all um, basically have the same types of commands, just you're using different apps to do that. And Let's see, with um, our contract with Code of the Future gives us a certain number of coaching hours each year. And so last year, that number of coaching hours was divided between kindergarten, first, and second grade. And so each teacher got about, I think about a half hour a week. Um, we have the same number of coaching hours this year, but we have six grades we're working with now. Um, so the kindergarten, first, and second grade teachers are gonna get less time third, fourth, and fifth graders are going to get priority be, uh, because you, you guys are new to it. But we still need to devote some of that time to, to making sure kindergarten, first, and second grade teachers you know, don't stop doing it. So they're going to get some time as well. Um, so I think, I don't know if you've seen the schedule um, for third, fourth, and fifth grade yet, but we've worked out the schedule and I think for the first cycle um, it's about 25 minutes a week and then I think that the classes are partnering up so it'll be two classes together for 25 minutes. When we get to the Legos we're going to be combining classes even more so that you have a longer period of time because it does take longer to, to actually put the Lego kits together and then program them and then disassemble them again if they need to disassemble them again. And then at the end of each cycle there is this epic build where the parents are all invited in and it's only, I think, maybe two hours. The parents come in for all the grades at one time and, and they just wander around into the classrooms um, and see what the students are doing. And so that'll happen at the end of the Scratch and Tinker unit, it'll happen again at the end of the Lego unit. And there will be um, another day of training for before we do the Legos. And so that will be probably during school. It'll probably be, you'll probably be pulled out for a day. I don't know exactly how we'll do that, if we'll divide it into grades. Um, but that'll come, you know, in the early winter or so. So I, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, teachers understand a little more of that big picture of, of what's going on and, and what happens in the long run. So this year, the kindergarten, first and second grade teachers, since they had the full coaching experience last year, they're expected to do a little more on their own um, this year. And so as third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers are getting coached this year, hopefully you're going to retain what you see the coach doing in your classroom and so you can be more independent uh, next year. And then we have one more year with Code to the Future and it'll be all grades. So we'll have you know, uh, more grades, so we have to divide the, the time up even more next year. And then after that, 
hopefully, or, or the idea is all the teachers are still doing this, still incorporating this on their own. Um, while we're going along this year, you, the, the coach will be available for teachers you know, to, to, uh, to talk to about how to incorporate you know, what you're doing during the coaching time, but how to incorporate that you know, on your own time with the students. So for example, um, the K2 teachers were maybe taking the water cycle that they're teaching and having the students create a little story about the water cycle where the students then have to you have to touch something on the screen and it shows the water evaporating and then it shows the next step and the next step. So the idea is to, that this is not a standalone uh, kind of entity, but you're incorporating the coding eventually into the regular curriculum. So it's kind of seamless. So with that, any questions for either of us? I'll just pull it up. Those, that's some of the robots you might make in uh, second, third grade. Um, you build them and then you program them to boot and do different things. Uh, these are the EV3 ones. You make something more like this. It's literally a self-driving car. It can detect things, and move around, and detect colors and objects, and do work. Um, so that's kind of the second cycle. Uh, and then here I was just pulling up some scratch projects. Um, but here's the life cycle I've been talking about a little bit. Uh, and this is Scratch, but it's very similar to Scratch Junior, so you get the idea. Okay? But instead of a My Story, you have a life cycle, and you kind of click on each one and it talks about it and stuff. Um, and there are just tons of different examples of ways to integrate, so um, the kids really love it. And, um, I really think it speaks to their reality. Like, this is how they interact with things, and they're on their computers. And, <coughs> Writing is still of utmost importance, um, but they're sharing it in sort of a way that was inconceivable when we were younger. So um, it's kind of cool, you know, kind of setting them up for their future. So uh, I'm going to give you just a lot of time to kind of go through the curriculum and, and work on a project, and then uh, I'll be just kind of walking around helping you to build it if you're getting stuck or confused or anything. Um, but the big idea is you can you just take your curriculum and you're walking through it and. I would recommend using the page that has the pictures on it, we call it like the student page, um, instead of just reading every little thing on the first one with all the words. Um, and I can kind of show you here what I'm talking about. But let's say, let's say you're in fourth grade and you go to lesson one. Um, you can read all this stuff, and this is very helpful for when you're uh, trying to teach it and just to give you prompts and the kind of things like that. Um, but right now, if you just sort of follow these, like step by step, and look at the pictures as a guide, it's really going to help you to build the project. And if you go through all seven lessons, you will have a completed final project. Um, and so for like fourth grade, you might be making, or you will be making something, let me go to right here, that might look like this. So I'm going to my projectile game, I'm getting play, I've got this little kind of monster that can go up and down using the arrow, arrow keys you used before. And then I press the space key, and it launches something. <laughs> so this is the projectile game. Uh, and that's the fourth grade after you build. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> let me go back to the entire <laughs> And then you can just see, like, all right, so there's the code um, for the alien, just sort of making it go up and down. Uh, there's the code for the projectile. Um, this is the code for the dragon to make it move around. Um, you can see it's gliding back and forth, and then it's like picking random spots to glide to to make it look like it's moving around. Um, and my game's a little more, like I use what would be the extensions. You probably won't get to that point today. Um, but you can see I added in like a variable. So if hits, it's hard to read, equals 10, uh, then broadcast wind scene, and then like a wind scene will pop up. Um, so just like in algebra, you might have an X or, or something for a variable. Um, you make your own variables here uh, in Tinker. You can call it whatever you want. It could be a score or kind of whatever. Uh, it just stores a value in there. But So you'll be following along through sort of step by step in, in uh, your curriculum to build your project. I'm here to help. Um, just for Tinker, I know we didn't look a lot at this before. Uh, you've got on the side here, this is how you navigate to all your different blocks, and you've got your control ones. Uh, so on start, 
Um, and then there's an up arrow press. So you don't have to, wow, well, that'd be more for like if you have a keyboard on a computer, I guess. Um, you could do like up arrow, down arrow, left arrow. We make our own sort of keyboard controls on iPads. Um, motion again is right there with the little guy kind of running. Uh, looks has like the glasses and the nose kind of changing the way things look. Uh, and they're still purple, so it's pretty similar to Scratch and its colors even. Um, and then you have sound, and this is an interesting tool, the pen tool. Uh, we won't get into it too much. You can draw things, so you could program in uh, to like move 50 and then turn 90 degrees and go up, turn 90 degrees, go this way, so you could draw a square. And you could put that on a loop, and you could make a whole like intricate shape or something. Um, but so that's the pen tool. Uh, we're still sensing, so this idea of like when you bump into something, uh, that would be those blue blocks there. Uh, down here is where you'd make the actual variable. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to be doing that today, but uh, if you do, you press on new variable and you call it whatever you want, and you get a new variable. Uh, so variables, well, they come in more later. Here are the operators, uh, plus, minus, equals, divides. Um, so you can see this is a little more uh, complex than Scratch Junior. Um, just allows you to do a lot more so interesting things. So we used it for the higher grade levels. Um, you may use operators today when you're using like this pick random kind of thing uh, here. So it's gliding to different spots on the screen. Um, and then these ones, these the, these are actually kind of interesting. Scratch doesn't even have these, like the original one. They, they, they call it physics. They, like you can like mimic gravity and things like that. Um, so this would be just much higher sort of level. I know even some colleges use tools like this to teach like physics 101 and stuff. So let's talk about a guy from University of Kentucky who does that. Um, so you'll be in here and uh, yeah, this will be the fourth grade one where you have your projectile game. And mine, it, mine has a few extensions, I would call it, to it. So it may not look quite as like intricate, but you'll still have a game of launching something and, uh, looks pretty good. Uh, I don't have a sample of the fifth grade story game on Tinker. Uh, really quick, I do have one though for um, on Scratch. So same idea, but this is just on Scratch instead of Tinker. Um, so I have only one right here. And yours will probably just have three scenes, like an intro, a game, and uh, kind of an ending. Mine has a few more because I added more to it. Um, but you may find students want to do that. Like they may take the basic idea and really make it their own, which is okay. Um, this is just some graphic I got from online. I'm going to add some of the music in there. All right, just found a gold ticket. Um, but just so you're getting this idea, there's a story, and it's kind of leading you to a game, and then it takes you back to the story. Right. Try to kind of summarize the intro of the story. Go into the fact. Now we're going into the game. That's just a graphic effect. It was like a swirly graphic effect. All right, so here's like a maze game. Uh, and in second grade, the epic build is just to make a maze. So um, the students, sort of after they've done this for a few years, they may know how to make the maze. And well, now they're taking their maze and they're building it into a story. Um, so now I've got my keyboard controls. I'm avoiding impulsivity from group assault there, and uh, trying to get past this temptation of the chocolate bar to get to the key. Oh, hope you had a good adventure. And then I just kind of summarize things here at the end. Some of the main themes from the story in the book.
working at school, I have to have every single roll doll book and get a big thing, and I just decided to read them all. So like, I'm obsessed with roll doll books. <laughs> Alright, All right, so then that's kind of the ending, graphic effects. Um, but just so you have the idea for fifth grade, it's, it's sort of you're combining some kind of story with uh, a game. Uh, so in a second, you'll take your curriculum and kind of walk yourself through like lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. Uh, try to plan your document uh, and then just ask for some help if you need it. Um, you might want to team up with somebody, I don't know, it depends on your personality. I like to work solo a lot, I know, but you might want to team up with someone and maybe practice like teaching it to each other. It's kind of up to you, whatever works best for you right now. Um, and yeah, so we'll go for it. If we have any major questions, I'll follow.